Right, we are good to go and we are live. We are live on Tuesday the 14th of April. A midday report at the normal time. Seems abnormal after so many weeks of not being on uh, normal mode. But um, we're going to try and get back into the groove um, with your help. So good afternoon and welcome for all the newbies. Tell us where you're watching from. What from did you get onto this channel with this guy over here? And uh, what's on your mind? Also, the open line, 073-767-5836. You can call me anytime if you want to swear me, you know, talk shit, you say something good, you got a problem. Call me up. Don't talk shit about me somewhere else. Say it direct to my face. Now my nose is running. Uh, but boss man, boss man, how are you? Namaste. Last night, it was the Cooking with Caro, part two. Did you catch that? Was it exciting? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, we'll release the video once Tyler does all the editing but you can see the live uh reports biggie governor auckland uh, new zealand in the house joins us uh mervyn Ido from the fives in chat with says hello and uh yeah as you guys are still logging on to main mohammed how are you to main if you're the newbie say hello uh if you're a newbie um let's just get steady to it uh kritika joins us from peter marisburg guinness and i do from Pretoria, capital city, and Rani Krishna Sami Verlam in the house where lots of water issues uh, were happening. Naresh set up the sailor boy in Cape Town in Bervina. Governor says, Ola KC. Leah Perimal says, Hi KC in Kuru. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the midday report. And, uh, right, Let's just uh, cut that there and uh, we'll get it straight into it um, as our viewers start picking up. Um, they're not used to catching me now live at uh, 12.30. It's been a hectic couple of weeks. I've been all over the place. Well, mostly in Durban, by the way. Um, what did you guys think of my um, cooking with Caro last night? We did a uh, lamb shanks. And lamb necks. Mother, please ask her to bring that fuel price down and stop robbing us. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Mikhail says, uh, Lotus Park in the house. Andrew, Andrew Sagadevan watching from Richards Bay. I need to raise this phone because my neck is getting, but I'm on the, I'm live on the phone. Anyways, today's, uh, midday report brought to you by CK Smooth. I normally do the giveaways in the evening. But I'm going to do a, a giveaway today. So, uh, CK Smooth, by the way, is an e-cigarette. If you didn't know, it doesn't contain tobacco. does, however, contain nicotine. And where's my vape? My vape is here. I use this one generally. Uh, let me show you. I don't swallow. I just get the flavor in my mouth. Uh, top char you made last night, boss. Uh, Casey, we met when you did the function at Prospectin. Oh, Jason Mudley, how are you, Jason? Tia Kisar, the cooking was amazing, made us all hungry. Yeah, so last night, uh, over the weekend, felt like having a poiki. Uh, then I took suggestions from you guys what poiki to host, and somebody or a couple of people came up with the lamb shanks, lamb necks, which I've never done before, but no, in fact, I've never done a poiki on my own. The wife generally cooks, so it's the first, second poiki I've done. Uh, you remember a couple of weeks back, a month back, I did the fresh chicken curry on the open fire with the uh, bush baby poiki pot. And uh, last night was actual poiki. We did a curry last time. Uh, a lot of charos get confused. They put a curry in a pot and they say they made, made a poiki. Cabbage and mutton is not a fucking poiki, right? Sheep head in a fucking poiki pot is not a poiki, right? Mutton curry in a poiki pot or chicken curry is not a poiki. Poiki is a poiki. you got to have all the vegetables in there like a soup, right? Uh, that's a poiki. So, uh, we made a proper poiki yesterday, or as far as I'm concerned, we made a proper poiki our way. And guys, if you're going to watch a cooking program where I'm cooking or somebody else is cooking, and they're putting the salt first, or the jeera first, or the turmeric first, leave them the fuck alone. Let them do what they want to do. Do you go tell Jamie Oliver or Gordon Ramsay, no, 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 you're putting too less ginger and garlic, gotta put more. Fuck off. Let them do what they want to do. Let them enjoy. I was just enjoying myself. I'm not a professional cook. I'm enjoying myself. If, and I'm entertainment value for you, if my curry gets fucked up, it's my thing. 
if there's too much of salt, it's my thing. If there's less, you get a couchy smell, it's because that's what I did. No, the spoon is wrong. Too much, too less water, too less heat, too less ginger, too much salt. Fuck off. Right, 073-767-5836 if you want to chat to me. CK Smooth comes in def, def, 10 different flavors. Uh, I was having watermelon the other day. Uh, the wife likes the watermelon. Uh, and we're going to give away uh, one of the sticks delivered to your door. Uh, thank you, Kritika, acting so professional. Uh, by the end of the show, remind me we'll give away the CK uh, Smooth giveaway. I must remember to do that. Before the end of the day, it will be delivered to your door. Uh, let me just jot that down so I remember. And then I don't have a pen to. Do. Okay, CK Smooth giveaway. Right, how many uh, come in a box? Uh, there's three in a box, but when you win, you get one stick in the box. 500 pass, but no one will an end product. Of it, but not one will know the end product of your cooking. Yep. Uh, I like the peppermint. It says Kritika has also got a stick of CK Smooth. Um, nice to just around the bride stand, whatever. <laughs> Act like you're smoking, you know, just, just, uh, like it looks so cool. Like, see, you know, when I'm with bras and they taking a smoke break and I stand like a chut, then I can also take a, a smoke break and. You know, just be cool. Uh, continue. Um, uh, more cookout show says Ramba Devi. Uh, yeah, you do it in style. Uh, uh, besides, yeah, yeah, I like to do it my way. Uh, can you deliver to New Zealand, Auckland? Uh, Suman Naidu, anything can be delivered to across the seas. It's a it's a courier cost. That's all it is. So if you want it, uh, arrange with me. I'll get it and I'll courier it to you. No problem. Zero seven three seven six seven five eight three. Why not? You pay for the product. Pay for the courier. I mean, how much can it cost to courier this? If you want it there, that's what it is. So it can be cooked, not a problem. Uh, when you're making uh, crab curry, we'll try that. Debbie Lee says hi. Uh, Albert Free is free. Uh, I need one. Uh, found it very interesting. Casey says, Jagannath, how much a box cost? Where can we buy? Right, this box costs two ninety five. Comes with three sticks in a box. Two ninety five. So about ninety five and a stick or eighty five and a stick. Uh, you get it online. CK Smooth online. Uh, what the hell does it matter what you put? <laughs> well, some people are fussy. Yeah, in PMB 285 for a box for 95 and each. Yeah. You can WhatsApp me 073-767-5836 or www.cksmooth.co.za. I think it is. Uh, online store. You can order it online and get delivered to you. Right. I'm going, I haven't started the competition at Samesh. We'll come to the competition. Uh, what we're going to do there and the cook off we did yesterday. Uh, I was shopping at B Najias. Be Nagias um, yesterday for the lamb, uh, whatever. So because I asked the guys where where would I buy the meat, you know. Uh, Casey next seafood extravaganza crayfish prawns. Tia Kasari, are you gonna buy the fucking crayfish and prawns for me to uh, do crayfish and prawns? Tia, just tell me the send me the budget. I will buy the crayfish and the prawns, and I will do it for you. that. Otherwise, for a struggling artist, it's a bit difficult to get crayfish and prawns. Uh, might do it in the oven though, might do a crayfish in the oven, you never know. Uh, yeah, lots of cooking stuff gonna come along, that's quite interesting, and it's something I wanted to get into. Um, just for the, look, my wife backs me up a lot, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the one, uh, she backs me up in terms of what I need to do, uh, so I'm just a fan client. That's a good combination, by the way, she's a good cook. Uh, you must do a wine tasting show, get someone to fly you to Cape Town. Yep. Uh, wine tasting is good. Is there a marijuana one? It's legal now. I don't think marijuana one is there. Kritika says, Nagia just sponsor your future. Yeah, I think a lot of advertising for them. I went to the store. Uh, by the way, there was a guy, a good friend of mine, businessman, who said that, and maybe Nagia had to pay me for that, who said that a couple of months back or a few months back, he stopped buying from B. Nagia's. He wasn't happy with the quality of the food or the meat that he bought from there or the products. And after watching me buy the Nagia sausages in Durban and do all of that, uh, he saw the chops I was buying, whatever, he decided to give Nagia's another go. And now he finds them to be good. He's happy. He spends about 6,000 rands a month on the meat and the veg there. And there you go. And that's just by uh, watching me. He says if I've got confidence in them, then he's got confidence in them. And now he's back to being a customer of B. Nagia's. 
Binagias. I like saying that. Binagias. Uh, we'll see what Binagias have to say. Right. Uh, let's talk about this, by the way. Very interesting story. Uh, Delmas. Um, sad story. Let's talk about it and let's see where the blame lies and why are we in this situation in this country. Delmas. Uh, a three-week-old infant not even a toddler, three-week-old infant has had her, I think it's her arm, amputated. Amputated. And the child went in for diarrhea. The child went in for, if you haven't heard the story, the child went in for diarrhea. Uh, the drip was either placed in the wrong arm or not put correctly. And then the arm became septic, went green, according to some reports that I got and the arm had to be amputated. I'm not going to give you all the details. I don't know, left hand, right hand, or whatever. Three week old tod infant uh, in Delmas uh, had the arm amputated. Now, this is a story of pure negligence. Pure negligence. Where do we put the blame? And by the way, medical negligence in the public health sector, uh, from what I've heard from doctors and now this morning's news as well, the health department is inundated with, uh, what are they, lawsuits, lawsuits for medical malpractice, medical, look, this child or the mother of the child in for a couple of millions will never replace the child's hand, but of course they have a case of medical negligence, malpractice suit, and they will sue the government minister of health and they will have to pay out. There's no recourse for them. But who pays those millions? It's not the government. Well, the government will pay. But whose money are they paying out? Tia Kesari says that's a 20 million lawsuit. I would think a minimum 20 million rand lawsuit is sitting there. And that's like, that's a given. That's, that's even like, there's no even case. Yeah, pay out the 20 fucking million. But if it's 20 million, we are happy that the child gets paid 20 million, the parents get 20 million, justice is done. But question number one, where does this 20 million come from? And if this 20 million was not spent on paying this medical malpractice suit, where would that 20 million rand go? Uh, Mika says hospital insurance, so that means I didn't know about that. Do they have insurance in that way so the government doesn't actually pay? Does it come from insurance or is it our tax money? I don't know. Somebody said, uh, Mika says it's medical insurance, so that means insurance companies will pay and not necessarily the health department. Somebody educate me there. Is that true? But let us also go further into the question, into this matter here, because as much as it's this matter here, there are lots of other matters of malpractice uh, um, happening around the country. Why is it that you think that we are in the situation of an enormous number of medical malpractice suits, people dying in hospital, poor care, wrong medication? Uh, yeah, why is it that you think we are in this situation? right now what is what is the at the root of it is it people who don't care is it unqualified people uh adil says unqualified doc need to be replaced well who do you replace them with uh money is not important the impact will have on the child's future really sad yeah yeah, yeah. we know that Mervin, but of course money must be paid out uh, they won't uh, refuse the money and it's just some sort of compensation. Um, unqualified, says Jackie Munsami. Unqualified doctor. Hello, says Avi Mudli. Unqualified doctors. Actually, I don't even think it was the doctor's fault there, actually. 30% um, pass rate. Academics being allowed. Right, there we go. Romala Nairu says 30% pass rate and the denial of top academics. Yep. Up, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, allowed into medical school. Mika Marino says, unless they sign an indemnity form, then it may, then it, it may be argued uh, that hospital insurance 
uh, in Canada, not 100% on, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know what South Africa is. Uh, the pass rate says, Eugene, we're talking about why so many malpractices uh, suits minus 40% of government. Uh, I think most of the people that work here. So this thing that we talk about, uh, it boils down to the government and health uh, minister. This is nothing now. This is nothing new. This is an ongoing thing and the government just turns a blind eye. Uh, I flip my life. What? Flip my life froze. Oh, the passion for the medicine. Yeah. Look, I was talking to my son this morning and I said, look, uh, that thing about the drip and all of that, I don't, don't think it had to do with the doctor. Um, it wasn't an operation. I think the, the nurses in the wards, uh, are the ones who do the most damage. Tell me if I'm wrong there. What's your point on that? Or what's your, your, sorry, I missed the, a lot. Which hospital? Uh, hospital in Delmas. Then they went to Vidbank, uh, regarding the child. Uh, so we're asking ourselves, uh, why do you think we are in the situation of these malpractice or just general bad treatment at hospital? I was talking to my son this morning and saying, you know, nursing, um, nursing. Let's talk about the nurses in the wards. I firmly believe most of the damage, most of the shit that happens is not by doctors in the operating theater or whatever. That's also something, but most of the damage happens in the wards by the uh, nurses or nursing staff dispensing medication incorrectly or not treating the patient correctly with regards to the drip, attaching the drip, checking on the drip, checking on the patient. Let's talk about, let's leave the doctors alone. I know of numerous cases where the uh, nursing staff are reading the charts incorrectly. For example, uh, 0 0.5 milligrams, they administer 50 milligrams now 0 0.5 milligrams and 50 milligrams is a hell of a difference uh, you know uh, but that comes down to what they're reading and what they're doing diligently or not nurses are having problems being under underrated so they have a don't care attitude don't care attitude is coming out quite clearly eugene says healthcare has become new teaching the newer generation does it for the uh, days off uh, Mikhail is agreeing with me. Yeah, in South Africa, the taxpayer is liable for all the government's fuck ups, says Samesh. I am talking about and trying to get your, uh, Tia Kasari says nurses also deliver babies wrong, causing permanent lifelong problems. So sad, but you get good nurses also. Tia Kasari, I'm sure you get good nurses as well. I'm not doing a blanket, uh, um, generalization here on nurses. I'm sure they are very, very good nurses as well. Melissa Ramdel says, good nurses and qualified staff leaving SA to work abroad. They can't get employment because quota system. That's a definite problem for many, many years. Uh, Vivian Governor says, these days provincial nurses assume they've uh, accreditation, actual doctors. Yeah. I think poor, at bad attitude. Uh, and I was just saying early on, nursing is a calling. I was saying to my son as I drove him to school, nursing is a calling. You can't become a nurse to earn money. I, 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 I can't, I, as a, as a career to, to earn money. I mean, cleaning someone's shit and doing stuff and be, doing with people who are sick with pus matters, cleaning wounds. You know, I'm talking about all that bad stuff. I mean, if you don't have a passion for that, you can't be a nurse. You can't be working in a hospital as a nursing staff, uh, or anything of that sort. Not for the money. But strangely, and I'm saying this again, not a generalization, there, there are obviously a lot of good nurses out there. Uh, or back in the days we, uh, Mika, did they admit to being at fault? Okay, but this is the days we, uh, Vivian says you gotta have a profession to be, yeah, that's right. Vivian Gavis, what I've been saying, you gotta have a passion, you gotta have a calling to be a nurse. Um, nurses don't really care how they tried. Um, uh, look, I think, my personal opinion, and you guys are agreeing with me. I said, so long as our government continues with this 30% pass rate, and this comes back to BEE and triple B and whatever. And of course, people will see me as a racist now, or whatever, call me a racist. And I've been called a racist, I've been called a hacker, I've been called a fraudster, and now I'm being called a narcissist. 
So can the guys on the other side please make up their mind which one is it or am I all of the above? Just let us know so I also can keep track. I'm losing track of what I really am. Then I was a guy promoting rape culture. But anyway, that's beside the point. What I want to say is, and what we've been saying by Park by the Posey movement as well, when I was saying one of my arguments was, how long will we continue with the triple BE and BE status where black people are just promoted for the sake of being blacks and then they are underqualified and they can't do the work. And who is suffering? I mean, that child I can see clearly is a black child that has lost the arm. And who am I fighting for? Indian people, white people, other people. When we talk about black uh, staff that are, are not qualified enough, don't care enough, whatever. Does that become racist if you talk about that? I want to say that we must be able to talk about the nurses in a hospital who are predominantly black. But we talk about the nurses. We don't talk about black nurses. We talk about the nurses. The nurses in our hospital today. So we don't say the black nurses because we talk about the nurses. Coincidentally, 90%, 80% are black, right? And if you're going to push people through on based on skin color, then and push them along the line to make them pass, to get them into the hospital, to become nurses, so that you have a quota system of black nurses, well and good, you've reached the quota system. Unfortunately, the person you've pushed through the door, he's not qualified enough, does not have a passion for the job, but you're fulfilling your mandate of a quota system. And the quota system is hurting us, hurting our country, and hurting the very people you want to help. You are talking, you are talking the facts, which every race it is, it is the facts. Yep. Today's nurses are not passionate, they just work for the money. We said that will not fall for the money. And this is how our country collapses when we have to place people and con look, I'm not, I'm, I'm not against what the government tried to do since 1994 is to correct the imbalances. I don't have a problem with that. We are 27 years into our democracy and what's happening at our municipal, our municipalities are failing because we have incompetent people behind the desk and that's a fact. Our healthcare system is failing. We have a child of three weeks old having an arm amputated because they could not put in a drip properly or the wrong hand, whatever it was gets her arm amputated and she has her chances of living a normal life have been eradicated. She will never lead a normal life. She can normalize as much as possible, but she will never lead a normal life. The trauma that the parents and the family have gone through, all because we have, and I'm going to bring it right down to it, triple BEE, BEE. That's what it is. If you want to blame that, today Bongani Bingwa on 702 was bemoaning the fact of where we are, why we are in the situation, who's to blame. Well, why don't we go back to the roots and blame the roots of what the root is. If you continue to put people in place who don't get two shits, are there to earn a salary, especially in nursing field or medical field. And it also extends to municipalities. I mean, nobody wants to talk about the fact that you go to a municipality, you see the guy behind the desk, he's, why are you busy talking to him or her? They're busy on their cell phone, they're busy doing something. Then they want to know what you want. Then they tell you must wait. Then they must come back. Then you must join that queue. You know, this is how we 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 started to destroy our country, which we're already on the way to destroy. It. I think we need to uh, be able to. Uh, if we don't call a spade a spade and tell it what it is, we'll forever be in this mess. But I don't think government don't realize it. I think they know it. But they also in a position of what do they do? They're trying to. The ANC is trying to fulfill his mandate to the black voters that they are doing everything pro-black. And there's nothing wrong with that. Until you come to realize if you continue to push that agenda without making sure the proper people are in place to do the job properly, that's where we have the problem. Look, I'm, glad I'm not government. Uh, they are government. They get paid to do those things. Uh, I can say everything and say I'll do everything right, but I'm not, uh, I'm not government. And um, I just think it's sad that we have to continue uh, accepting mediocrity, which end of the day affects us as a people and of course affects us as a country. And so long as we have uh, incompetent people in power, we will continue to have this problem. Tell you the truth, they will help if you they palm them, no problem. Look, Avi Modli is saying, 
Uh, they will they will help if you palm them something, and you know that might sound like a like a like a stupid story or whatever. The fact of the matter is, corruption is everywhere. Corruption is everywhere, um, and if you want something done, you got to be corrupt. You got to play the game. You got to play along. According to an orthopedic surgeon, the most difficult job to put a drip for a baby hands. Uh, so. Adil says, according to an orthopedic surgeon, it's the most difficult job to put a drip for a baby. Hence, you can't, you can't have unqualified next baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, there we go. I mean, somebody might say putting a drip is easy. Let's look at that. A baby, right? This is, this baby, infant, three weeks old, right? Now, when you go for a blood test or to, or to take your blood, whatever, and they need to put a drip on you, they will ask you to squeeze your hand so that the vein starts to show. And then, of course, even then, they fail to find the vein. Many of the times, you have to make your fist like this and try to flex your muscle so that your veins uh, come up so that they can insert the needle into the vein to put the drip, whatever. Now, imagine uh, a child who you can't, uh, say that too and they can't really do that you still have to find the vein uh, to put in the drip and as Adil just said this now I, I I never really thought about it like that you know in that way uh, Tiaz Kisari says I left a government hospital because I was losing my mind 100% better in a private hospital as hospital management uh, they don't take nonsense yep she's talking about she's moved from a She's moved from a public hospital. She's losing her mind. She's now in a private hospital. Yeah, I pity those who have to go to a uh, uh, a public hospital. Uh, I will go to a private hospital because I have, and my wife, and we've always been to private hospitals. I'm not a Lani. So let me tell you even that story with me. For the last 10 years or so, when my mom, I don't, I don't have a, let's talk about that. Let me talk about that, friend. Private hospital versus government hospital. I just said to you now, I won't go to a public hospital uh, for treatment or whatever, wherever I can, because I'm booked into a private hospital. How can I, how do I afford a private hospital? Me who's not working, work for myself. Uh, I don't have a boss covering my medical aid. So I took out a, uh, maybe 15 years ago, I took out a hospital plan with Discovery. And let me tell you, not cheap. I was paying through my ass. And uh, let me tell you a true story about that as well. At some point, I was paying about five and a half thousand, uh, maybe about three, four years ago, up to four years ago, yeah. I was paying five and a half thousand rand uh, to have myself, my wife, my son, and my mum covered on the hospital plan. Which means there's no medical aid for doctors where you pay cash. If ever you go into hospital, then 80, 90%, 100% of your costs are covered. Four and a half to five thousand, at least five, at least five and a half thousand rand I was paying a month. Driving around in my, uh, 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 1.3 Corolla and whatever. And then I meet an old friend of mine, comes to my house in his like a BMW, whatever, talks to me about his rims and his whatever. And he's in his late 40s. I'm what the fuck is he doing with BMW? Talking about rims and all of that. And, uh, yeah. He had a much fancier car than me. But when he had a heart attack, when he suffered a heart attack, when he suffered a heart attack, he was in the queue at a public hospital. I won't say which hospital it was. He was in the queue at a public hospital. He was in a public ward in a public hospital. Now, I don't have to tell you the condition. So here's this guy driving a nice fancy BMW. And I'm not driving a BMW. Uh, and, uh, but... I had medical aid, uh, not medical aid, I had a hospital plan. So my wife and my son would never, never go to a public hospital. When I say never, I mean, if the situation arises, if we're there, we go into public. But I am paying for that luxury. Up till now, I'm paying about four and a half thousand, four thousand. My, my mom's gone off, she's gone with my brother on his medical aid uh, after many years. She was on mine for about 15 years. And uh, I'm on a hospital plan. I'm paying through my ass, by the way. Uh, paying through my ass. And uh, yeah, I always used, I don't, I, I won't mention his name. I hope I don't. And, and I was so disappointed that, you know, 
when he had a heart attack that he had to be in a public hospital, you know, and and in a public hospital, I'm not saying you don't get good care. There's always that element of what type of care are you getting, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm paying through my ass at the moment uh, for that facility, but I can't see my wife. Priorities is right going to a, or my son going to a public hospital. Exactly, Caro. Uh, people these days would rather have all that luxury. Ouch. To boast about rooms, uh, Lonnie should have sold the rooms. Yeah. Anyways, let's leave that there before I say too much about that and get myself into trouble. Uh, uh, I'm a diabetic and I had a foot infection. The private hospital wanted to amputate. The only option I chose to go ba Bara as I couldn't afford it. Help me so everyone will. Uh, nice story from Adelia. He says, Private also wanted to amputate my foot at a cost of 75,000. As they said, it's the only operation. I chose to go to Bara as I couldn't afford it. It's now four years later. I still have my foot. Wow, that's a good story. That's a good story. That's a good story. Good story. Good and good for you. Uh, you, you chose that. You took a risk though, but it worked out for you. Let's not forget gap cover. Yep, gap cover as well. I've got gap cover as well. Medical aid is necessary, not a luxury. Yep, medical aid and hospital plan is not a luxury. It is indeed a necessity. I 100% agree with that. We are on to 1 o'clock now and uh, it's time to say goodbye. But before we do that, let's give away uh, my daughter works in the children's ward, the private hospital. Sometimes it's difficult. Keeps a selfie. Kind of comment there. Uh, I bought my house five years now. Cook's giving us a... Uh, right. Let's give away some CK Smooth. CK Smooth. We're going to give away CK Smooth right now uh, to one lucky winner. Anywhere in the country, we will deliver one stick of this, one stick uh, of a random flavor. One stick can get you up to 500 puffs, up to 500 puffs um, on this uh, CK Smooth. So get yourself ready to win. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is... Um, Hashtag uh, CK Smooth. Then you're gonna hashtag what poiki I did last night, and then you're gonna hashtag your area. So example, you'll be CK Smooth. Hashtag CK Smooth. Hashtag cabbage and mutton. Hashtag PMB. The second one is the poiki that I made last night. So hashtag CK Smooth. Hashtag the name of the poiki or type of poiki I did last night. And then hashtag the area you are from. And then we will choose the winner there. Right, roll up. It's a CK Smooth promo brought to you by CK Smooth. It's an e-cigarette. Uh, no uh, tobacco, although it does have nicotine. Uh, so if you want to put yourself in line for that, uh, let's go right now. As we start to end the program, thank you for joining us uh, live on the Midday Report. We catch you at 8 8 o'clock tonight, 8 o'clock tonight, and uh, uh, let's see who can give this to, yeah, now, uh, right, all the answers coming through, Kiroshin, uh, hashtag CK Smooth, hashtag Lamb Next, uh, Lamb Shanks, uh, Jackie is saying bye, right, goodbye everybody, and check you later, uh, we're trying to give away the CK Smooth, yeah, and... <coughs> Right, also I try to give it as much as possible to people who are regulars on my show. Uh, okay, Dinesh got my poiki, did handle well done. Uh, now he does poiki. Darmesh says lamb shanks next. Uh, Vivian Gavin says hashtag CK smooth, hashtag lamb next. Romalan number says hashtag CK smooth, hashtag lamb shanks. And next, hashtag Westcliff Chatsworth. That's Romalan Naidu there. Uh, Naveen says hashtag CK smooth, lamb next. And uh, Melissa Ramdia, hashtag CK Smooth, hashtag Lamb Shanks, uh, Poiki and uh, Newcastle. Avi Mudli, uh, CK Smooth, uh, Santon. Uh, thank you, Tia Kasari. Right, uh, we're going to give it to Avi Mudli. Avi Mudli was a regular. By the way, guys, it's not about who's first on the list. I also look for regular regulars on our program. Avi Modli is a regular supporter on the program. So you've got to be live all the time. Coming, me, give me your, give me your comments. 
and I'll try to give it to those people. Avi Mudli will WhatsApp me on 073-767-5836 with the details. Well done to Avi Mudli. He wins the uh, CK Smooth promo today. Uh, hashtag CK Smooth, hashtag Lamb Shanks and Lamb Neck. And uh, he's from Sanson uh, winning today all over the country. Thank you to everyone who... Uh, uh, contributed to the program today. If you comment more often, I see your name more often, and I give you the prize. So you got to be a regular, a regular on the program. Well done to Avi. Well done to all you guys. Uh, Eugene asked what the CK stand for. Uh, Kaji is one. Uh, Yusuf Kaji. Uh, the C is what his partner's name. From what I knew, his partner's surname. Uh, two surnames. Kaji. Yusuf Kaji. The K stands for. I'm not sure what the C stands for. I'll find out for you. In the interim, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you at 8 o'clock tonight or 8 p.m. or 20 hundred hours. Be good. Keep it mother. <laughs>